Now you already seen loads of Tai Chi motherboards on this channel and today we have something really outstanding in terms of first of all new platform the AM5 from AMD and we have the ASRock X670E for extreme Tai Chi Carrara motherboard which definitely looks outstanding this is I didn't expect this one to be honest and the design is really cool and if you're into some uh, modding or if you're into some I don't know adventures when building your PC in terms of doing some custom parts uh, experimenting with them or doing something really cool especially a custom loop that would uh, look something similar to this it will definitely fit a build outstandingly but today we're going to check it out with the Ryzen AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. I'm going to give you some details about the motherboard, going to go through the whole connection part and everything that you need to know and some numbers of course just to show you how it uh, performs on this motherboard. So let's go. It supports AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors. When we're talking about the VRM design, so we have 24 plus 2 plus 1, 105 Ampere smart power stage, 8 layers of PCB board, server grade ultra low loss PCB with Nichicon 12K caps, dual channel DDR5 which supports DDR5 up to 6600 MHz in OC, high density power connectors for the 24 pin ATX power connector and the two 8 pin 12 volts EPS. We have three Hyper M.2 sockets, PCI Gen 4x4. Then we have Blazing M.2 socket, which is PCI Gen 5x4. We have two PCI Gen 5x16 slots with SMT technology and reinforced steel slots. So basically this gives you an option, well, more, more stability and grip for the cards so it doesn't break the PCI slot. Also, I do have to mention that the top PCI slot is lower than usual so it goes by one PCI slot lower than on any other motherboard so you do need to take that into consideration because the graphic card will be lower towards your power supply shroud. Uh, talking about the audio so we have WIMA audio uh, capacitors, ESS uh, Sabre 9218 DAC, individual PCB layers for right and left audio channel Impendent Sensing and Nahimic Audio. Now let's go to the IEO ports and see what we got there. So you have a BIOS flashback button and clear TMOS button as well. We have two antennas, two uh, T2R killer Wi-Fi 6E for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. You have HDMI port, two USB 4 Type-C ports, 40 gigabits per second, five USB 3.2 generation 2 Type-A 10 gigabits per second, then we have three USB 3.2 generation 1 ports, uh, we have one RJ45 LAN port, we have one line out with gold audio jacks and one microphone input jack which is also gold plated. And uh, basically what we have the connectors on the motherboard. So we have power LED and speaker header. We have one RGB LED header for your standard uh, RGB 12 volts 4 pin. Then we have one CPU water pump fan connector which is uh, designed for a smart uh, fan speed control. Then we have six chassis or water pump fan connectors, which are four pin PWM, one 24 pin ATX power connector, two eight pin EPS 12 volts power connectors, one front panel audio connector. We have two USB 2.0 headers, which support four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.2 generation one headers, which support four USB 3.2 generation one ports, one front panel type C USB 3.2 generation 2 times 2 header up to 20 gigabits per second. We have one doctor debug with LED, one power button with LED and one reset button with LED. The motherboard supports RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10 for SATA devices and supports RAID 0, 1 and 10 for M.2 storage devices. Talking about the storage, since I already mentioned all the M.2 uh, connections, we have four SATA 3 6 gigabits per second which are on the chipset and four SATA 3 6 gigabits per second connectors which are on AS Media ASM 1061 uh, controller. Audio is 5.1 channel HD audio with uh, content protection so this is uh, Realtek ALC 
4082 uh, audio codec. It also has Vima audio capacitors for front outputs. Graphics, it has uh, support for uh, integrated AMD RDNA 2 graphics. You have one HDMI 2.1 TMDS uh, FRL 8G compatible, which supports HDR, HDCP 2.3 and maximum resolution up to 4K 120Hz. Two USB 4 supports HDCP 2.3 and maximum resolution up to 8K and 60Hz. Now for some unique features basically, we have PCI Gen 5 which is our dimension for the graphics and the M.2. We have a 12cm Carrara Edition cooling fan, blazing M.2 Gen 5 uh, fan heatsink, dual channel DDR5, USB 4 Type-C ports. Ultra low loss PCB with 24 plus 2 plus 1 power stage, flexible integrated I.O. shield which basically almost all motherboards from ASRock have and which is really cool, well basically the higher end I would say. Nichicon 12K black caps, ultra fast gaming with killer 2.5G LAN and killer double shot pro, ASRock lightning gaming ports and easy update with BIOS flashback button and ASRock auto driver installer. At the back side we also have um, I would say some sort of a support which has the ASRock 20th anniversary logo somewhat to make the whole uh, motherboard stable and so it doesn't flex. The design is outstanding and when we're talking about the AM5 since now we're at that point, right? Uh, I used, uh, so these are the specifications that I used for the build. So we have the ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara. I used the uh, GeForce RTX 3070 Supreme X because unfortunately that's the only card I have for testing, then we have, uh, as for the RAMs, I used Kingston Fury Beast RGB 2x16 on 6000 MHz, uh, Kingston Fury Renegade Gen 4x4 2TB, uh, in a case which was uh, Chief Textalion 3, Seasonic Prime PX850, and for the AIO to cool the 7900X was Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 addressable RGB. Now, uh, I know what you might think right now. Everybody was testing out and the processor was going up to 95 degrees Celsius. Why didn't I use a larger AIO? Stuff like that. I really wanted to see what happens. Now, here we go. AIDA 64 Extreme Edition. Only CPU and GPU ticked. I always do that, so bear with me. 74 degrees Celsius on the processor at peak. But since more... I would say more load goes on the processor if I take CPU, FPU, cache and system memory. The peak was 79, which is outstanding. Now Indigo benchmark is where I got, let's say, a more realistic temperatures when it comes to load on the processor, comparing it to other reviews that you've seen online, online already. So Indigo benchmark actually pushed the processor up to 89 degrees Celsius. And when I check Cinebench, uh, Corona 1.3, uh, CPU-Z, uh, Geekbench, and what did I have here? Povwin 3.7, V-Ray Benchmark 5.02. So Povwin 3.7, 94 degrees Celsius. Even 3D Mark didn't surpass 80 Celsius degrees. Then we have, <coughs> what was this? Uh, Cinebench R uh, R23, 90 degrees, Corona 1.3, 82 degrees, and CPU-Z, 86 degrees. But all this you'll get in a separated video exclusively for the 7900X. So basically what I got here are outstanding results when we're talking about 7900X and this motherboard combined with all the parts that I had installed in that build. The motherboard, first of all, looks outstanding, as already stated right at the beginning of the video. You have a quite nice design, which is some sort of, a, I would say, combined with the black uh, passive heat sinks on the VRMs. And there's actually loads of room to mount the cooler. There are some motherboards that, I think those are mini, those are ITX motherboards, but don't get me wrong, might be mistaken. But some have issues accessing the screws here, making it uh, harder to access the cooler. You have loads of connectors for your addressable RGB, which is quite outstanding. Loads of connectors for PWM as well, so you can connect multiple fans if you're not using a controller for both of those parts, so addressable RGB and PWM. The design is great, I would definitely use this in a black-white case if you're not 
into modding or if you don't want to modify some parts. Or finally, if you really do want to do that, you can really do crazy stuff. As already stated, the first PCI slot is lowered and uh, this is where they placed the top M.2 slot. You do have to take that into consideration, either uh, connect all the parts here and on the side everything then place the graphic card because when you place a graphic card, especially if you go with the next gen which are really thick, there won't be too much room to place and to connect everything at the bottom. When we're talking about uh, the socket, um, I actually didn't have the problem when we were talking about thermal paste and overflowing the processor, as you can see in the close-up, after removing the uh, Arctic liquid freezer from the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X, it actually, the thermal paste just spread it around here on the top and it didn't overlay it on the side. So this is really cool. It's really nice to have an LGA socket on AMD, so it didn't happen to me in that quantity when removing the cooler and then the processor got stuck on it but uh, it did happen a couple of times it did happen but right here that issue for you guys that were afraid that you might break some pins while removing the processor and stuff like that which is totally understandable this is a solution and we have an LGA socket on AMD finally which is definitely appreciated uh, was it too soon? We'll get to that part in another video. But today, uh, ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara, another Tai Chi motherboard that looks just like perfect, perfect motherboard. Uh, when we're talking about performance, uh, 7900X didn't have any issues because the VRMs are really outstanding. And uh, I didn't have any issues with thermals. So even though the thermals on the processor went really high, as I already stated, even at 94 degrees Celsius at one benchmark only. So in gaming, it didn't go this high whatsoever. Uh, when using other benchmarks up to maximum 80 degrees, which if we take into consideration the new highest temperature, you don't have to worry about it. Now, all in all, I think this motherboard is quite suitable. And after all, it is an extreme board for an extreme processor. So if you're interested and if you decide to go to the next generation of AMD AM5 processors with an extreme one, this is a really cool motherboard to go with. So I'll place the links below for the ASRock uh, X670E Tai Chi Carrara as well as the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X so you can check the prices and if everything suits you to actually manage a build with this uh, cool looking motherboard. And that's basically it. If you like this um, overview and some details about the motherboard and this video in general, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell for future content. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Hope you have a good one and see you next time. Bye bye.